In this presentation, we will work an example problem related to steps to take to create the departmental income statement. Here's a review of the four steps that we will take to create the departmental income statement. We will accumulate revenue and direct expenses by department, allocate indirect expenses to departments, then allocate service department expenses to operating departments, and finally, we will create or prepare the departmental income statement. So our first step is to accumulate revenues and direct expenses by department. This should be a fairly straightforward process. This is going to be the worksheet that we will be using. We've got up top the allocation base. This is what we're going to be using to allocate certain items, typically being the indirect items. We've got the total expenses. This is an item that we're going to assume we know. In other words, we know what the total expenses are. What we need to do is break those total expenses out into the departments sometimes this will be easy with the direct expenses sometimes more difficult such as with the indirect expenses and ultimately the service department we then have our departments we've got the service department one service department two these are non-revenue generating departments so they are there to support of course the revenue generation departments because revenue is the goal of the company so we are going to apply indirect costs as well as direct costs to the service departments and then we'll take those and we will then allocate them to the operating department or sales departments departments that have revenue related to it we're going to say there's two of those sales department one and two again these are operating departments departments that have both revenue and expenses departments for which we will finally apply after we've found out what the service department expenses will be or costs will be we will ultimately apply them out to sales department one and two first thing we will have are the direct expenses now the the revenue of course should be fairly straightforward we will be able to on our income statement allocate out the revenue by the departments the sales departments or operating departments because of course we know who you know which departments made those sales and then we have the expenses which we have the two components the direct expenses and these are going to be the ones that are going to be easily allocated so we're going to say here's the total direct expenses we're going to allocate those out by department the service department one service department two sales department or operating department one and two we know where those go in this case because they're direct expenses in other words these people that earn these salaries work for exclusively these departments and therefore it is easy for us to apply out the salaries to them supplies we're going to say is the same way in this example we've got the 1500 we have the supplies broken out they're already broken out by department uh, within our, our accounting system and therefore it's easy for us to break them out as direct expenses to the departments that were consuming them then we have the indirect expenses examples of indirect expenses remember that the indirect expenses are those that we don't know how to allocate them in other words we know what the total is but not what to allocate them or where to allocate them we're going to be using rent and utilities so we're going to assume that these four departments are in the same building we pay rent we pay utilities on that building we're not able to break them out between the departments easily we're not basically getting billed based on the department that are consuming the building and therefore we have the totals that we need to allocate out we can use an activity base to do so common example in this case of rent and utilities would be the floor space we can look at the square footage of each department in comparison to the total to get uh, that kind of comparison to allocate out we're going to say we know what the totals are so they're 11,000 and 1,200 that's what we know what we don't know is how to break them out into these four departments you could say well why don't we just take that number the total that we know divided by four allocate it out well one because these departments aren't the same size most likely that's going to be the most common difference if we say that's the case then we have to allocate based on size or based on some relevant activity to do that we use an activity base that base we're going to use is floor space we would think that would be a, a reasonable ratio to use to help us to allocate these expenses related to rent and utilities to do that we would need this floor space for each of our departments we're going to say that uh, department one is 240 to 240 department three 720 department uh, or sales department one sales department two 720 and 1200 we then look at the percentages so we're going to say all right here's 240 divided by the total and that's going to give us 10 percent if we move the decimal over two places and then 240 of obviously again 
and then the 720 divided by the total and so on and so forth there's the 30 percent now of course it all has to add up to 100 percent when we do this because this is the point all we're doing is saying well this is the square foot per each department that means we own a total of all the departments or 2400 square feet and then we just take the square footage of one department in relation to the total if we do that for all departments then we get percentages which must add up to 100 percent percentages that we can use then to allocate out whatever we decide to allocate out with it in our case utilities and the rent so if we go back up to our worksheet then we can take this 11,000 and of course we're just applying it out in accordance with our percentages over here we're going to say all right 11,000 times 10 percent is going to give us 1,100 1,100 and then uh 3,300 which is of course 11,000 times 0.3 and then of course 5,500 we're going to do the same for the utilities so we've got 1200 times point uh one is 120 and so on and so forth if we take the uh 1200 zero, zero times point three that's giving us the 360 and then of course if we add these up so if we add up the first row 1100 one, zero, zero, plus 1100 one, zero, zero, plus 3300 zero, zero, plus 5500 zero, zero, that's going to add up to the 11,000 so all we did was allocate these two items out in accordance with these percentages, not because the floor space has anything to do with the rent or the utilities per se, but because we think it's a relative good activity base to use to allocate out the expenses of rent and utilities expense. Then we have the total department expenses. So we're adding these up, both the direct and the indirect. So 20,000 plus 1,500 plus 11,000 plus 1,200 for the total expenses, service department one, 1,100, 1,100, 1, and 1,020 for a total of 2,320. Now we have this situation where we've basically completed these two service departments. We have allocated the expenses to them that we need to, including the direct and indirect expenses. There are no revenue related to them because they're a service department. So our ultimate goal is the sales department or operating department, the departments that do generate the revenue. Therefore, we need to allocate out the service departments to the sales department. So once these have been completed, we're now going to take our next step to allocate them out to the sales or operating departments. Now we're going to use a different activity base to do this. Uh, for our first item of service department one, we're going to use sales. Again, why would we use sales? It, it, note that we just picked sales as a good activity base to use. Sales has nothing to do necessarily with service department one, but it's something that we can use to then apply out uh, service department one. And maybe sales is going to be a good way for us to look at the relative size of department one and department two with relation to service department one. So what we're going to do is say, okay, here's the sales for department one and department two, 40,000, 48,000 for a total of 88,000, same kind of ratio analysis. We're gonna say, all right, we've got the 40,000, 40,000 divided by 88,000 is about 45%, 48,000 over 88, about 55, that adds up to 100%. Again, we just chose the activity base of sales because that was our managerial decision to do so. We think it's a relative activity base. And then we're going to say we're going to use this to break out the service department. How? Based on a 45-55 percentage breakout. So then if we do that, we're just going to say, all right, here's the service department. It was at 2,320. We're going to remove the entire 2,320 at this point and apply it out to the sales department or operating department one and two. How will we do that? We're going to break it out 45 55 right 45 55 percent so we got the 2320 times 0.45 one uh 1044 now note there's rounding of course so it was really uh if we took the the actual percentage it was 40,000 divided by 88,000 which is really 0.454545 times uh the 2320 and that's going to give us closer rounding to 1055 
Note there's always going to be rounding issues. These are estimates, of course. And so even, you know, if we round it to the penny, we're still going to have rounding issues. So we've applied this out. We take this, we're going to apply it out. And then we're going to do the same thing for service department to the second service department. This is still here, 3,520. We need to apply it out to the operating departments. We're going to do that with a different activity base. Why? Because we, as the management, think that employees is a better activity base to apply out this service department. So that's going to be a managerial decision to make. We decide that the number of employees, we count them. There's 36 in Department 1, the Sales Department or Operating Department, and 52 in Department 2. Same ratio analysis. 36 over the total of 88, because 36 plus 52 is 88, is about uh, 41%. And then about 59% is 52 over 88. So if we take those numbers then down here, we can use them to allocate out Service Department 2. I, and again, you might be saying, well, why would I use, why did I use a different activity? Why did I use sales here and service department here? It's our managerial decision to do that. We picked the activity base that we think was most relevant. And then we applied, in essence, the same process, a ratio analysis, to use the relative ratios to apply out the costs. So once again, we'll remove the 3,520 from the service department, making it go down to zero, apply it out in accordance with our ratios. Remember that the ratio is rounded, so it's really going to be 36 over 88, or this is the real percentage we're using times the 3520. That's where we get our uh, 1449. So again, the rounding is not perfect, but remember, you got to deal with the rounding all, all the time. And then, the 2000, and then we have the 3520 times the 0.59. And that gives us about the 7,076. If we add those two up, 1449 plus the 2071, that adds up to the 3,520. So we've applied out the 3,520 based on these percentages, based on the number of employees. So then if we take our totals in our worksheet, the total expenses, here's the total in the total column. We have now cleaned out the uh, service departments, now at zero for the two service departments. We allocated those expenses over here to the sales department or operating department. So now we're at 12,564 and 21,136. Uh, and now we can construct, in essence, our income statement with that. First, we'll take a look at a standard type of income statement type format where we have the total. We have the sales department one, sales department two, operating department one, operating department two. We've got the sales up top, which is going to be, of course, the revenue. The cost of goods sold, so we're going to subtract this out, sales minus cost of goods sold, that gives us the gross profit on sales. And then typically in a normal type of income statement, we would have the operating expenses. We have the operating expenses, which we're going to be pulling from the worksheet, the salaries, the supplies, the rent, the utilities. And then we have the service department one and two, which we allocated out to the uh, sales department, uh, the two sales or operating departments. Now, we can see the items in green are going to be those direct expenses. The items in red are the indirect or allocated indirect expenses. And then we have the allocated service department in yellow. So if we add those up, we get our total expenses. If we add up all these, all these items, all these expenses. And then the gross profit minus the operating expenses is, of course, the net income. Now we could change this format a little bit and we see the departmental contribution to overhead type statement. Again, it's an income statement type of statement because this is a performance type of statement, but it's going to be broken out a little bit differently. We're going to be starting off the same. We have sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit on sales. We subtract sales minus cost of goods sold. Then we're going to take a look at those direct expenses, the ones that are applied, applied directly to the department. So those in our case include the salaries and supplies. That gives us the total direct expenses. We're going to give a subtotal here of the total direct expenses. This being a bit different than we would see on a normal type of income statement because we're trying to get more information by department. So notice a normal type of income statement is really geared for the most part for the entire company as a whole. We're here looking at department. We want to measure same performance type numbers, but we want to break them out a little bit differently so we can apply them to departments a little bit differently and therefore hopefully make better decisions with it. So that's going to give us the department contribution margin or the department contribution. 
And this can be a, an important number because note that we're talking about those expenses which if we were to eliminate a department would probably go away because these are going to be expenses applied directly to the department. In, in other words, if these people that earn these salaries work only for that department and these supplies were used only for that department, if we were to eliminate the department, then of course those amounts would go away as well, of course, with the revenue and the cost of goods sold. The amounts that we apply usually are going to be more type of overhead type of, of amounts. So when we break out the amount we apply, indirect expenses and direct expenses, the direct expenses, if we, if we get to the um, department contribution, this is going to be the amount that is going to be contributed basically to what might be thought of as overhead type of amounts. And then we apply out the overhead for certain types of decisions, but other types of decisions we need to understand that the overhead is an applied number, whereas the direct expenses are direct to the departments. For example, if we were making a decision on whether or not we should terminate a department, whether or not it's, it's a profitable department or not, then we might use this department contribution number a lot because we know that this would be the number that would be eliminated. If this was a loss, then it could be the case that if we eliminate the department, then we might be better off as a whole. However, if the total net income for the department is a loss and this is a positive number, then we have to see if some of these allocated items that we are allocating to that department would be items that we can eliminate or not. So this is one reason we break this out in this format. Then we have the indirect expenses. These are the amounts that we're going to allocate. So that's going to be the rent, the utilities, service department, total service department two, the total indirect expenses. Again, these are expenses that if we were to eliminate one of the departments, we possibly would not be eliminating these expenses or at least not all of them. Because when we allocate them out, it's just an allocation that we're using. We're just using an allocation to, to allocate these costs that may be there even if the department was not there. It helps with some decisions, but we need to keep in mind that it is simply an allocation. And then we're going to have the net income. We calculated the net income just on the totals here and not on uh, the allocated amounts. So we're just showing the net income on the totals. We're emphasizing here the department contribution in this case, in this format.